All right, welcome back, friends and neighbors. This is another networking video from Professor H. We are coming to you live from the world-famous RIT Networking Labs, and we are talking to you this week about host routing. Now, this will be from Chapter 2 of the Packet Guide to Routing and Switching, so I'll be pulling topologies and information right out of that chapter so you can follow along if you wish. And without further ado, here we go. Okay, so when we start talking about host routing, we really have two choices or two kinds of destinations. One will be on your network and the other one will be off your network. So on your network means that you don't need a router. It also means that the two nodes, the source and destination, will be on the same IP-based network. Now from a from a topology standpoint, that also means that they're on the same switch or on the same set of interconnected switches and the same VLAN if VLANs have been configured. Now the minute you want to go off of your network, well, that's when you're actually going to need a router. You can't get there by yourself. In traditional IP version 4 networks, you have to ARP for the destination. Now we've talked about ARP before, and what that means is that you have to be able to communicate directly with that node. Well, if they're off of your network, you're not going to be ARPing for the destination. Instead, you're going to be ARPing for your default gateway. So there is a basic process that you're going to go through every time you want to talk to somebody. And as I am very fond of saying, everything is in the tables. Networking is all about tables. So the first one you're going to process is your routing table. Now this routing table is on the host, which is really what we're talking about today. After you process the host routing table, then you're going to be up for processing the ARP table. And then if the entry that you're looking for is not on the ARP table, of course you'll have to ARP for that destination. And again, if you don't know much about ARP, I put a video up there about it, so go ahead and, and review that. Once you've ARPed and you've got the entry in your table, go ahead and send the packet. The packet will be off to either the destination, because it's on your network, or you'll be sending it to a router and asking the router to forward it for you. So the Chapter 2 topology that we're working with is the one pictured here. We have two networks, the 192.168.15.0 network and the 192.168.20.0 network. And we can see that we've got three hosts that we're worried about. Two are on the 15 network and one is on the 20 network. So what is a host routing table? Well, this is a host routing table. Every single node on a network has a routing table that it has to process. And this is true whether it's Macintoshes or Linux boxes or Windows boxes or whether you're doing IP version 4 or IP version 6, you've got a host routing table. The example that we're going to do today is IP version 4 on Windows. But we can see that we've got four main columns that we're going to process. The metric column, okay, it's there. It describes mostly the speed of the link, but we're really going to be worried about the first and second columns and if we get a match there, we're going to go to the third and fourth columns. How does this work? What you're going to do is grab the bottom entry, in the case of Windows anyway. And what we're really concerned here about is the first column and the second column. So what we're going to do is a logical AND. So you're going to grab that first entry from the bottom, take a look at the first column, and AND it with this second column. Note that the second column is all masks. You're also going to take the destination that you're looking for and AND it with the second column. And so what you get is two numbers. And you're going to compare these. If the two numbers wind up being the same, then you have a match and that's the routing table entry that you want to use. If they're not a match, then you're just going to grab the next entry and process it in the exact same way until you do have a match. All right, once you have a match and you're done celebrating, you will grab the third and the fourth columns because these two columns are going to tell you how to forward this uh, particular packet. Now, the interesting thing about this is that when it's on your network, then the interface and the gateway will be the same. So let's do an example. In our network, 
15.1 will ping 15.2. So 15.2 is our destination. And we know that they're on the same network. But when you're looking at IP addresses, you really have no idea what the mask of the destination is. So you make a guess. You, you say, well, I'm going to use the masks that I know about, the masks that are in the second column of my routing table. And so if we skip ahead a little bit, I'm not going to process all of the entries of the routing table. But what we find out is that when we get up to about midway, all of a sudden we have a match. And that that is a match because of the anding process. So what did I do? Well, I took the first column, 192.168.15.0, and I anded it with the second column, that mask. And that was the result I got, 192.168.15.0. And then I took the destination, 15.2, and I ended it with the same mask. And hey, look at that. The result is the same. So that's a match. So now I say, okay, I've got a match. I'm going to forward this. What interface do I use? And it's going to be 192.168.15.1. Now we'll mention this later on, but really this particular host had one interface. So it's a no-brainer, but we've got to find a way to tell the computer which interface to use. What gateway am I going to use? Well, in this case, the gateway is going to be me. And that means that I don't have to send it to anybody else. I can get there directly. I don't need anybody's help. Now, if I need to, I'll ARP for them after checking my ARP table, and I can send the packet directly to the destination. Well, what's our other example here? Let's say the destination is not on my network. So I process this exact same routing table, and I'm going, and I'm going, and I'm going, and I'm not finding any matches until I get all the way to the top. Getting all the way to the top brings me to what we call our default gateway entry. And the default gateway entry is nice because it matches everything. So you may have noticed in the routing table the default gateway line has all zeros. Well, the cool thing about all zeros is that when you and any number with zeros, you get zero out of it. So it's going to match anything. Following along with our example, I'm going to try and get to the address 20.3. So I and the first column and the second column, take a wild guess what I get, and then I'm going to and the destination 192.168.20.3 with that mask 0000, and I get 0 .0 .0 .0. I have a match. Terrific! Now I know which entry matches. Let's get our interface and our gateway addresses. Well, my interface, that's me. That's the NIC I'm going to use to forward this. Who do I send this to? Well, I'm going to send it to my default gateway. And remember, the default gateway is nothing more than a router you're going to send this to. It's not me, so I have to check my ARP table. If I didn't have an entry for the gateway in there, I would ARP for the gateway. And then I could build the frames for forwarding this traffic to the gateway. And really what you're doing is you're saying, hey router, I need to get to this destination. It's not on my network. Could you please handle this for me? Well, that was our quick run through on the host routing tables. I hoped it helped. But there are a lot of other things that go along with this. So I encourage you to read through the chapter. A couple of those are, what if I have more than one interface? Well, it could be that you have more than one default gateway. It could mean that you have a lot more processing to do. It's not uncommon for a host to have a wired network and a wireless network interface. You might also have some virtual interfaces. So the routing table can actually get fairly complex, but it's processed in the exact same way. IP version 6 routing tables on a host processed in almost the exact same way. You still have addresses, you still have masks, still have interfaces, and you still have routers. Routers also have a routing table. We're going to talk a lot more about that in uh, future videos. And of course, Linux machines and Macintosh machines have host routing tables as well. They just vary in the amount of information that you can see with the various commands. So the commands are different, the options, etc. Well, thanks very much for stopping by and, and listening in on this host routing video. Uh, our next time we're going to be talking about spanning tree which is chapter three of the packet guide to routing and switching remember that this one was chapter two uh, chapter three also has rapid spanning tree which has certainly been the replacement for 
uh, what we call 802.1D spanning tree, but I'll take you through the basics and then we'll do the more advanced uh, version. We have uh, configs that I've been adding to the web page there, brucehartpence.com. So if you want to take a look at those or even make some suggestions, please feel free to do so. And of course, there's the other videos here on the YouTube channel. Well, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for listening. And may your packets always reach their destinations.